All right. So you see the title of the <laughs> of the video was how to become a DevOps engineer or a cloud engineer or a Linux system engineer in 90 days. All right. So <laughs> I'm laughing because of how ridiculous it is. I see these things online all the time and I've been seeing them on uh, YouTube, even LinkedIn, mostly YouTube for the last few months of the last year, especially since the pandemic ends. So there's no way. OK, let me let me explain it to you very clearly, like a polar plunge, like somebody jumps into ice water in an Antarctic or the ocean during the wintertime. Or maybe you need a bucket of water thrown on you for that unrealistic idea. There's no way on earth that in 90 days you can go from knowing nothing to becoming a cloud engineer or a DevOps engineer in 90 days. It's not even possible. It's not realistic, right? So you'll see all these videos where people are saying how they did this training and they did this. Nine times out of 10, they were already an IT professional before. It's also questionable that they actually have an actual job. So I actually work in IT. I'm an IT director today, right? So I've been working as a cloud engineer slash Linux system engineer, VMware engineer, network engineer since 2007 when I left the Navy. So the the ability to learn the amount of information that you need to learn in 90 days is just not even realistic. OK, now I can see six months, especially if you're dedicated, you're focused, you're grinding, you're in some kind of structured learning environment or maybe you have a college degree. So you've actually went through the process of learning what it takes to actually learn and you can self study with like something like a DevOps program through like code cloud or tech world with Nana or AOS notes or whatever program is in place, or you're paying for a boot camp where you have a structured process where they have sprints there. You have somebody that can stand there and teach you hand in hand and show you what to do. And you're on a daily basis doing labs. You're taking the certification exams, AWS certified solutions, architect associate with Google cloud platform, GitLab. You're learning Git, GitHub, you learn Linux, Linux Foundation Certified Systems Administrator, Red Hat Certified Systems Administrator. You're actually learning these technologies. You, you have, you set up like a blog and you're keeping track of your projects. You have to do a lot of hands-on projects. That's just not physically possible in three months. And the reason why is because you have so much information that you need to learn in a condensed format, you're gonna choke and really go insane trying to learn that much information that quickly. Now, okay, you have somebody that says, well, I quit my job. <laughs> I do, you know what I mean? That's, that's wonderful too. But at the same time, you're talking about going to a completely different career and starting a completely new process, a new methodology, a new technological structure of how you actually will work in that job. So what I mainly see happens uh, that, that does happen is you'll get a person that goes through some kind of training, they get a certification, and then they launch their own technical training, right? And they sucker you in to paying for it. And this person has never worked in an enterprise or work environment where an employer is actually paying them money, where they don't have a consulting company, where they have customers that are paying them money to actually do work, designing reference architectures, they're actually deploying software, working back and forth with teams, and all of the magic that it takes, well, it's not magic, but all of the work and effort that it takes to actually work inside of DevOps. It's just, it's just unrealistic. So I want you to be realistic, right? So if you're, if you're, if you clicked on this and you're watching this video, let me tell you something. Number one, you need to learn technical fundamentals, right? Whatever that is for you and whatever timeline that is for you, but what's realistic from my experience, from what I've seen over the years, there was no Google IT support certificate or Google cybersecurity certificate or any of these kind of rudimentary baseline certificates back in 2007. They didn't exist, right? The way you learn IT back then is you got hired by a company or you got a help desk job and you actually took the time to find somebody inside the company that will help you learn and teach you. They had training programs. It was thousands of dollars and it, it was very, very difficult to learn back then. So nowadays you can learn a lot through the internet 
through YouTube and for free. But the problem with the free stuff is there's no structure to it. So in order to work on learning something, you have to have some kind of structure of what you're going to do. So that's where boot camps can come in uh, actually really, really perfectly because they give you the structure that you need to follow through a process. And it doesn't matter if it's a, a company kind of like, like uh, Yellowtail or Level Up in Tech or all of these different boot camps that may exist out there that are structured and they have some proof that what they've accomplished actually matters. You want to make sure that you pick something that works for you. So if you're a self-study person and you have that discipline and you have the academic background that allows you to focus on structuring and planning out your day and your time, then you can do something like Code Cloud, where they have a an, an actual DevOps bootcamp. Or if you want to become a Linux engineer or a cloud engineer, you can follow through with some kind of structured program of some some kind of structured format program. But you don't want to just be randomly watching YouTube videos or randomly searching through AWS training. You need some structure to what you're going to do because if you intend on working in this field as an employee. You need to know what you're doing, right? So you need to know the baseline tools that everybody uses in most companies, whether it's Git, Terraform, Ansible, uh, Linux, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, Ubuntu Linux. Uh, if you're in Europe, it could be SUSE Linux. And the cloud environment is very based upon where you're from, right? So if you're in the US, AWS is king or Google Cloud Platform. If you're a Microsoft shop, it's Azure. But if you're in Asia, you're going to you're going to use Alibaba or Huawei. You're not going to use AWS, right? Or you might have a private cloud provider like Rackspace or Phoenix Nap or DigitalOcean, uh, you know, as a cloud service provider. Or you're using some kind of local co-location site. So <sighs> what I'm saying is, if you're going to go into IT, slow down, right? Take your time and slow down. Take a deep breath. I know you want to make that money, right? I know you want that money yesterday, right? You got the bills to pay. You want to buy this car. You want to buy this house. You're working as a chef. You're working in construction. You're working as an electrician, you uh, waitress or secretary or whatever job you're working right now that sucks and is why IT is drawing you in to make money. Just understand this. To get paid a hundred something thousand dollars, 150, 180, 200,000, 300,000, you have to be able to solve hundred thousand dollar, two hundred thousand dollar, three hundred thousand dollar and up problems, right? For that company. So the value that you're bringing to the company is your ability to help them solve their problems. That's why they're paying you. So your lack of knowledge and your lack of experience is going to put you behind the wall. And you're going to get frustrated and pissed off. You're going to pay somebody $500, $1,000, $2,000 for their training. And they've never actually worked in IT, right? There's no way that someone can just learn, learn tech and teach you and they have no experience whatsoever. They have to have worked in the field for it to be effective because there's things that you're going to learn and be taught with whether it's different technologies or, or how to resolve a problem in a meeting and the social skills that you really do develop when you're working back and forth with different teams, especially in DevOps, because in DevOps, you're working with developers, you're working with security teams, you're working with operations teams, you're working back and forth with executives, you're working with people in contracting or, the, or the, whoever the financial people are. You're working back and forth with all these different groups and teams. You're trying to get things authorized and you're trying to get these technologies pushed through. You're reviewing reference architectures, you're troubleshooting networking issues, you're actually designing uh, how the network and infrastructure, transit gateway, whatever the particular direct connect, express route, you know, Google hybrid, whatever the particular technologies are, you're actually designing them and you're working back and forth with teams to actually either do proof of concepts or to deploy the technologies out or to verify there's a problem and help fix the problem. You can't learn that in a couple months. You have to, you know, once you have the baseline knowledge, the basics of what you need to know, then when you get a job, that's where you cut your teeth. That's what that's where you start to it's like in the military when they send you to boot camp, right? So when you go through boot camp and you learn how to shoot, that doesn't make you the ultimate warrior, 
right? They're not going to stick you in the field. Well, it depends on where you are, <laughs> you know, but that doesn't mean you're going to be somebody that, that the commander or that, that sergeant first class or that gunnery sergeant is, is going to say, you know what, send him out there, right? I'm trusting David or whatever your name is or whoever you are to go out and make this happen. Same thing with a company. They're not going to take you brand new in the door. No training, no no guidelines, no nothing, and just let you loose. For hundred something thousand dollars, who's going to do that, right? Or a company that you're consulting with and they have hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions of dollars on the line, it could be multi-million dollar projects on the line, and you don't have any experience. You come and looking at these reference architecture design, uh, designs, a Lucichart or a Visio or whatever, and you, you're actually having to decouple, say they have to do microservices or they're migrating, because usually cloud technologies, they're migrating from one platform to another, or they're standing up a new platform and they're moving old tech into new tech, um, if it's a long-term company, many times, it's very, it's not often that you come into an organization unless it's like a startup and they're building a brand new architecture from the ground up in the cloud, right? You can make some mistakes there, but when you're migrating existing platforms, <laughs> you have to understand the legacy tech, which means that you have to go through the process of learning technical fundamentals, networking fundamentals, Linux, especially with DevOps, Git, GitHub, Terraform, uh, Kubernetes, if it's a shop that's past the virtualization uh, phase of VMware and EC2 instances or, you know, uh, whatever technology is being used in that shop, Amazon, Google Cloud, Microsoft, whatever. So in order to learn the robustness of all these different technologies and get these certifications, it takes time to get that stuff in your head. Right. And that's this is exactly why I'm such a big advocate of performance based exams, because you can grab information online that allows you to be able to, you know, take a multiple choice exam, rock through it. Some people are really, really good with taking tests. But when you sit down and you're actually doing the work, you're going to get exposed. Right. I can't even tell you the amount of people I've worked with that have all these certifications. They've got AWS Solutions Architect Associate. They've got Pro. They've got this, that, and the third. But you put them on a VPC and say, configure the VPC. We need the subnet to be this this side of range. And also, we need to you know set this up. And Lambda needs to be configured. And we need to work on these different things. And they start stuttering. Oh, oh, let me get back to you. Um, give, give me a few days to... to what are you talking about? We need we need to get this done today. So here's the document. Here's the side range. This is what needs to be done and configured. You know, the Internet gateway should be removed. That, that. And then you explain everything and then you check back in. It's still not done. Right. That's what happens when you have book and certain knowledge, but you don't have hands on experience doing projects, actually doing the work. And three months is not enough time to learn just the cloud environment because you got so many other tools that you have to use also, right? And if you don't have an understanding of DNS, if someone sticks you on Active Directory or you're working with a Linux environment, they stick you on LDAP and you're sitting there Googling Linux commands, <laughs> that's, that's why I'm saying it's so unrealistic, right? Six months, okay, right? Because you're grinding, you're dedicated to it, you have a structured format, but six months is realistic if you're in a structured environment and a structured program. That's where it's realistic. But even then, that's tough. It's a, it's a very tight timeline. What's more realistic is about a year. About a year is more realistic to really have a deep understanding or, or a mid-level understanding of all the different technologies after you have the certification or after you have the projects and the hands-on experience, a year is really more realistic and it's a little bit more comfortable, right? You can grind, 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 grind for six months, but then you're really doing the projects and the hands-on labs and you, you're working with the technology. You stood up your own lab in your house. You may have some routers and switches that you bought from eBay. You have some physical servers that you probably got somewhere where you can actually have the servers stand up your own clusters. You're deploying the technologies. You need to put your hands on keyboard and do the work. 
The money will come. Promise you, the money will come. Relax. Take the time to learn your skill and be good. Be good at one thing. Then go off and try to learn other things. But these people out here that are just ripping people, getting you to pay money because you're you're impatient, you're rushing, and you think that there's some kind of quick fix, and that's the problem. There's no quick fix to learning and putting knowledge inside your head. You have to take the time to learn. To fill your brain full of knowledge is not going to happen in a couple of days, especially with complex technical topics. It's going to take months. It can take years to be good. That's why they have junior, mid-level, and senior engineers. That's why they have managers. That's why they have directors for guiding those who are new or don't know. So as an ending, 90 days, <laughs> forget it, right? Six months, dedicated, focused, continuous, daily time. Okay. Anything less than that, you're wasting your time. And you're probably cutting a lot of corners and cheating everywhere. You walk into an interview, you're going to bomb. And if you do do well in the interview, when you get the job, you're going to struggle. So take the time to learn and then start to apply, start to go for the job, start to do everything that you need to do. And then once you get the hands-on experience, then you learn, you know, finish up the certifications because nowadays in IT, the degrees don't really matter that much. What matters are those IT certifications. And some people say, oh, you don't need an IT certification. Ignore them fools completely, right? Because when you get screened by an HR person or a hiring official, and if I got a stack of resumes, which I've had happen, if I got a stack of resumes this thick or a full inbox full of resumes, 30 of those resumes have certifications and 40 of them do not, guess what? I'm not going to take the time to look at people that don't have certifications. I'm not going to bother. And the reason why is because the people who are certified and took the time to go through that process, it demonstrates a rudimentary baseline knowledge skill set. That's what the certification does for hiring officials and HR people and screening people and recruiters. It establishes a baseline skill set that you have the basics necessary to do this job. So I wish you all the best for the Muslims. Assalamu alaikum for everybody else. Peace, love, and I wish you the best. Be, don't, but don't be no fool. Don't be greedy and, and just ridiculous. And re, Don't do that. Use your brain. Understand that everything takes time and everything's a process. Dedicate your time. Dedicate and focus and do your thing. Peace.